Hey y'all, it's Michael and I'm doing another vlog review of a short story collection and that's Babylon Revisited and Short Other Stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Now, Fitzgerald is obviously most famous for The Great Gatsby, which I really do like. I love that book. The thing is, I haven't read that in years. Years. The past few short story collections that I've been reading, they've been really modern. So I was like, you know what? It's time for a classic. So yeah, what I'll do is after each and every single short story, I'll let you guys know what I think about each one. And then at the end, I'll do a collective overall thought. So let's go. Finish reading the first short story on here called The Ice Palace. Uh, this is about a woman named Sa Sally Carroll who is um, engaged to a man up north because she lives in Georgia. Once you read enough of Fitzgerald's works, they kind of over overlap thematically wise. He writes in this way that um, it's very go like there's a cigarette in my there's like a cigarette in my uh hand type of thing like that that's the that's what I conjure up when I read his writing that's just that's just for me personally and thematically this is mainly about like different classes especially about um the north and the south now this is of course white people but how about how the north and the south um people during this time in the 1920s view each other economies between like north south up down different classes hot and cold because it it deals something with like the temperature. All right, I just finished reading the short story Mayday. Um, this actually took me quite a while to read because it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty long short story. Um, it's almost like novella style, but we follow a lot of characters because it switches like the the chapters switches. Um, and it's after World. It has to be yeah, nineteen twenty. So it has to be after World War One, and the soldiers are coming home, and we follow obviously um these people from Yale. Of course, it's. Fitzgerald, it's, it's Fitzgerald, um, and they're basically going to like a dance, but something before the dance, um, one of the characters actually meets a, um, goes and meets his old uh, friend, and he's asking for money, and we go from there. Talks a lot about a lot of things <laughs> that are quite the same, um, and this one it has a very um great Gatsby vibe, and I am I don't want to be like one of those people that like constantly refer to it, but. I mean, it's his greatest work, so, you know. <laughs> Black is very tactful in a way that's very, like, like, it's, it's very jazz age, very, oh, like, that's how I feel about it, but it has this part where it's, it just, like, it goes kind of, like, for me, it loses the thread almost. I just finished reading the short story, The Diamond as Big as the Ritz. Um, this one I really, really liked. Um, so, since I'm three stories into the collection, I just, I, I kind of do have to mention this. So, um, I always forget that when I read classics and whatnot, that a lot of the views and whatnot and like what they think of, um, are not modern. And here, this is a perfect example of that because there's this, there's this, even this weird thing that's mentioned in here about like still slavery happening. And I was like, oh, the feeling that Fitzgerald might have been, I don't know. This is not concrete, but yeah, he, he might have been racist. I don't know. I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it. You can correct me in the comments if you want to. I'm probably right. But this is a story about um, John. He is from this small town called um, Hades. He goes to attend this prestigious school and he meets this um, this guy who basically says that he his father is like the richest in the world and he doesn't really believe it. So essentially they go for um, vacation. He invites um, John to his uh, family's house and they go kind of like thrillerish, which is really interesting because um, I've never would have said that about Fitzgerald at all, especially, um, in the stories that I've read of him, especially the previous two short stories in here. I would not say that at all. Halfway point of this, it starts to get very, um, like almost ominous and actiony. And it gets to this point where at the end, I was like, what? Because the, the revelations of, um, John's friend's family is like, is revealed and I was like, oh my god, what is going on here? The thing is, though, is I kind of wish this story was a little bit expanded more because there is a potential actually, like, it's almost feel as though it's like, it's, um, half of a book, like a full on novel where it was like really, um, condensed, but first off, excuse the wind noises. I'm gonna try to post, edit it and post. Um, but there was just a tornado and there was a storm earlier, but it's gone now. But I just finished reading the short story, Winter Dreams. Um, Hmm. You know how in the last clip I said that uh, Fitzgerald's low-key racist? Not low-key, high-key, well, high-key. Um, here, he was a little bit misogynistic. <laughs> but yeah, this one is... Mm, 
this one, you know what? Even mm, yeah, I didn't like this story. <laughs> I was saying before I was interrupted by the dogs. This is a story about Dexter. It's <laughs> it's basically about Dexter who wants to marry um this woman named Judy Jones, but it's like a love lost type of story. Daryl has done the storyline. Basically, in all his other stories, so it's kind of repetitive in that regard. It just wasn't my favorite. I think my issue with it was the pacing of it. It's just so fast, like it moves incredibly fast and time is like skipped, but not in a satisfying way. And then Judy Jones is portrayed as like not the, well, actually, none of the women, well, yeah, none of the women, especially in this story, is portrayed as like, having any type of intelligence or any character in that regard i just finished reading the short story absolution um this one you know i liked it uh this one is about um this character this boy named um rudolph miller who uh is confessing to uh to the to father schwartz he's confessing to father schwartz about something that happened but then it leads to something yeah it goes from there um this one i like the writing style oh, that's my favorite part of it is uh the writing style i keep talking about great gatsby but that's his most famous work so i'm gonna keep referencing to it um uh, but yeah i really liked it it has very similar themes <laughs> again very similar themes to great gatsby like really similar as a reader why i gravitate towards certain authors writing style um and something about fitzgerald i i really like it he writes in a way where like i mentioned like oh like you know like oh high and fancy but i think it's his word choice that i really enjoy because it says something about it i it's really hard for me to articulate, but I, I really do like it. I just finished reading the short story, The Rich Boy. Um, this one I liked. Uh, this is about Anson, who uh, basically becomes um, like in the rich scene. He goes to Yale. Yeah, okay, very similar to the other ones. A love of his life, Paula. And essentially, it's like a lost love type of thing where it doesn't work out the way um, he wants it because of his drinking problem. Is this very similar to The Great Gatsby? Yes. Well, I keep making references to it yes are all his things very similar yes the one thing though i'm not gonna lie the one thing and i think i am am admiring about all of these stories is that while they are very 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 similar it's impressive that fitzgerald can basically talk about the same thing but if anything i'm not bored like i'm not bored and his phrasing and his word choices um, are really so good. Like, begin with an individual. And before you know it, you can find that you have created a type. Begin with a type. And you find that you have created nothing. All right. I went to the coffee shop and I read two uh, short stories. The first one is called The Freshest Boy. Um, this one is about a student named Basel. I'm sure that's how you pronounce it instead of Basil. Um, so Basel uh, at, at the school is not... Like, like nobody likes him essentially. He's almost bullied, but he's, no one likes him just because no one likes him. Several parts to this story. The first part is him trying to find people to go to a play with him because he has to, uh, get like a teacher to go with him to New York to go watch a play that he wants to go watch. Um, and overall, I thought this was okay. Um, it's very tactful and just like to the point. It's different. I swear, someone's always lawnmowing whenever I want to film in my neighborhood. I don't know what's going on, but someone's lawnmowing, so that's what you hear. But yeah, I was like, oh, okay, it wasn't that bad. Like, <laughs> very similar themes to whatnot. Like, I have no real thoughts about it. I just like, okay, I read it and I was like, okay. The next one though, I have a lot of thoughts because I really, really liked it. It's the titled story, um, Babylon Revisited. So I was, Whenever I read a short story collection, if your short story collection is going to be named after a short story in there, it better bring it. And this one, yeah, I really like this one. <laughs> this one's about Charlie, and um, Charlie's basically going to France because he has to go pick up his daughter because of an incident. Uh, yeah, so there's basically that. And this gives me a lot of great Gatsby vibes. Um, so first off, it's very tactful. It's Oh my god, this story is so tactful. Like, it is precise. Precise in the way that, like, I feel like Fitzgerald leaves, 
like no sentence unused. Every sentence like leads to the next point. It's so tactful because it's so short. The story is actually really short compared to his other stories, but it says a lot without saying a lot of things because like even mentioning of certain things, especially with the character of Charlie, like you, you kind of under, like, I don't want to give too much away, but you understand how he got to this position and like the situation behind it without saying a lot of like the more, um, like it's, you know what it is? It's very nuanced. That's what I love about it. The story is so quick and short to the point. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is really good. I was like, wow, I could see why it's highly regarded as one of um, Fitzgerald's uh, top sh short story because it is very tactful. But it also says a lot about, um, especially the society that Fitzgerald was growing up in and the kind of like Great Gatsby. I'm going to keep referencing the Great Gatsby to deal with it. How hard, how hard people will do everything for this American dream. And when they do have it, like, there's always that one thing, that one thing that they can never have. They can never have. Okay. And you know what I'm talking about? Like, there's just one thing and it, and like, it's always something that money can never buy. And, and, um, Babylon Revisited. Yeah. And I love all the references too. I was like, Oh, yeah. So I really, really liked it. It's my favorite short story in here. I really liked it. Just finished reading the short story, Crazy Sunday. Um, this one is about a man named Joel who is like in the acting world, like Hollywood, uh, who falls in love with, who fought, well, who falls in this affair with an actress who is married to a director and they know each other, that type of situation. And it goes around from there. Um, it's, very precise, similar to Fitzgerald's um, other works. The thing is, I haven't talked about it in the previous clips, but um, you could tell, actually, without with all his short stories, actually, um, and Great Gatsby, of course, um, and this other pair, like all his stories, basically, uh, he re he really felt some type of way about alcoholism. Like it's ingrained within all his short stories, essentially. That uh, I don't know if that's maybe like. Maybe something happened within Fitzgerald's life that I'm not aware of, like something happened, because I don't know that much about him. Maybe I should read a nonfiction to see like more about his life. But yeah, he definitely felt some type of way about alcoholism. And in here, especially in Crazy Sunday, uh, he, he felt some type of way for it. I just finished the last short story on here called The Long Way Out. This is the short, the shortest short story in this. It's literally like five pages. Uh, but it was really good. I would give the whole thing away. But it's about a old woman basically waiting for her husband to, uh, to go see him. It was really sad. And I was like, whoa, this is like five pages and I was invested in it. Like I, I genuinely really, really, really liked it. Thank you guys my overall thoughts on Babylon Revisited and other stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Now, the ending of this has like a little bit of life and career moments, like just a little quick short um thing about uh, Fitzgerald's life. And um, so basically all his stories were really about his life. And, and I have, I, I don't give any fault to that because authors and artists in general draw from their own life. And I can see where all of his stories come from because this quick little thing at the end really explained a lot. Um, overall, I really did like this. I personally, for me, I really, really love Fitzgerald's writing style. It's one thing that I, I remember reading The Great Gatsby for the first time and I was like, wow. I felt like, of course, I was like a big boy reading like a really American novel type of thing. But also just the writing style was like, wow, this is, it, I just remember it being just like this something where it was so different. And I felt it, it it's so like high. It, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like in this way where it's written, like it's just so eloquent. That would be the one, like, that's the right word. It's so eloquent or eloquent as the meme would say, but it's so eloquent. Um, just his writing style. And I really did like that. Now, my favorite story in here, obviously, is Babylon Revisited. Oh my gosh. Just thinking about it over again. It's so precise and so tactful. And just the, his writing style is like, wow, this, this, I can see why this is the one like he gets acc some accolades for because it's, it's personally my favorite. And I really did love it. Like some of these stories were very like, um, Especially like, let's say Mayday, that, it was, that was long, okay, that's like a long story. Um, but overall, I really did like the collection as a whole. And whilst Fitzgerald has some issues, like, in all his characters are basically white men, they all go to Yale. <laughs> 
<laughs> prestigious schools. There's that one thing in here where it was like black people as they used to be and like the help as they used to be. And I was like, oh, I don't know. The women are not always favored in the lightest of, I mean, they're basically Daisy. Like, let's, let's be serious here. The thing is like, while well, all the themes tend to over overlap within all the stories, um, I personally, personally for me, you have to give it to someone with literally, they're very similar, like very similar. I was never bored. <laughs> like that's, you gotta give it to him. Like I was never bored, even though they were literally the same character, like let's be honest here and very similar themes. I personally was never bored. Overall as a collection, I rated, I would rate it 3.5. I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but I am. I did like it. At the end of these videos, I always let you guys know the next short story collection that I'm going to be reading, and that's <laughs> Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schwablin. So I've been seeing this floating around, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, until then, I'll see you guys till next time. Bye.